What's going on, you guys? So, I'm not 100% today, but my mood has shot up, mainly because a fellow YouTuber uh, commented, said that IGN posted a new preview video of the game yesterday. Uh, special thanks to Ross. Uh, so, I found the video. Uh, it's actually a gameplay video of Star Trek oh Infinite. God, I'm very, God. very excited to watch this. Uh, so, let's watch it together and... See what this goodness is going to be all about. All right, let's let's fire it up. There's an old joke about 4X games that goes something like this. After you spend several hours on YouTube watching tutorials, you get to fumble your way through a playthrough with a vague idea of what you're doing before you inevitably make some fatal mistake you don't recognize until much, much later. Then you restart and do a little better. Star Trek Infinite isn't interested in reinventing the galactic wheel. This is a 4X Games 4X game but it does do a good job of bringing Trek into the space that publisher Paradox Interactive has boldly charted over the years. Incoming transmission. You have the bridge. From the jump, Star Trek Infinite lets you choose from four factions. The Federation, the Klingon Empire, the Romulan Empire, and the Cardassian Union. The Federation is best at exploring, diplomacy, and researching new technology. The Cardassians excel at spycraft and warfare. The Klingons' penchant for tradition and honorable combat makes them the guys you'll want to go to if you're looking to conquer the rest of known space, and the Romulans are great at stealth and guile. Initiating tactical retreat. I mostly played the Federation because I wanted to try a less combative playstyle. Star Trek Infinite is a pretty traditional 4X game. You'll navigate a series of menus to control your civilization, manage your planets, acquire resources, expand your territory, build and plot ships, really and like so on. Map. If you've played Stellaris, so you've got a pretty... one thing that I wanted to point out is I really like this uh, boxy uh, in sectors-wise. Um, for some reason, it gives me like a lot of Birth of the Federation vibes. If you guys are not familiar with that, that's the first Star Trek Grand Strategy game. So I'm gonna point that Good out. idea of how Star Trek Infinite works. If you haven't, just imagine navigating a series of Star Trek themed spreadsheets and you'll be on the right track. You have to like spreadsheets and pause and play gameplay to get the most out of the experience, but there's some cool Star Trek flavored filling in this. So the one thing I do want to see here is I do notice you're probably starting a game out with just Miranda class. That's interesting. There's some cool Star Trek flavored filling in this donut. First, you'll run into lore-important Star Trek characters who can command your ships, serve as admirals in your fleets, or spy on other factions. It was cool to have Spock run some of my tech research Whoa. and step into a... Oh, cool. Alright, that's cool. Spock is gonna be running technology. ...science vessel when I needed him, and it just wouldn't feel right to have the Enterprise under the command of anyone other than Jean-Luc Picard. Another cool thing is the mission tree, which tasks you with completing certain faction-specific requirements that mark major milestones in the events of that society. Gather enough alloys the Federation, for example, and you can build the Enterprise. Nice. Win enough fights with the Enterprise, and you get Worf. <laughs> While surveying nice. systems gets you bonuses that aid the Federation for decades. Completing these milestones oh. unlocks story events and missions that will be familiar to Trek fans. And there's even branching paths depending on how you decide to play your faction and what you do when story events play out. It all feels very Trek, and gives you something to shoot for as you manage your civilization. Scientific breakthrough achieved. My favorite part of Star Trek Infinite, however, is how differently each faction plays. When I was the Federation, I tried to do things the way they would, which meant diplomacy and exploration first. I would only get into shooting fights as a last resort. I kept a couple of fleets around for defense, but mostly I explored strange new worlds, sought out new life and new civilizations, and boldly went where no one has gone before. And the crazy part was, it worked. I built relationships with other cultures, and once we got along well enough, I brought them into the Federation. Meanwhile, the Klingons were starting wars every other week, the Cardassians were trying to bully and or conquer the less advanced civilizations, and the Romulans were mostly trying to be left alone. That is, when they weren't sneaking into our territory. Eventually though, conflict does arise, and you'll want to be prepared when it does. Star Trek Infinite lets you customize your ships, taking a simple class blueprint, and adding in all the wonderful toys you get from the research your scientists have been doing. It's fun to be able to tailor your ships to your playstyle, and it means your older ships are still useful later in the game. You don't have to engage with this system, Infinite will generate an auto-best build for you automatically, but it's a nice feature, especially in a game based on a series with ships this iconic. 
Star Trek Infinite does a great job of staying true to what makes Trek Trek, while integrating it into a 4x strategy game. You're still navigating a lot of menus, certain things are still very obtuse and require a lot of prior knowledge, I wasn't kidding about all those YouTube tutorials, and it can sometimes feel overwhelming, especially if you're new to 4x games. But after spending a dozen hours with this preview build, I still want to explore, discover new civilizations, unlock new missions in the mission tree, and see what else Infinite has up its sleeve. Exploring the final frontier isn't easy, Infinite gets that, but it also understands there's a whole lot of adventure out there too. All we have to do to find it is be brave enough to engage with all those menus. System survey complete. For more on the latest games, check out our exclusive hands-on preview of Alan Wake 2 and our hands-on preview of Forza Motorsport. And for everything else gaming, lay in a course for IGN. So, that was uh, very informative. We, know, we, we first saw the Klingon tree, so that's really cool. Um, I like that Spock is going to be helping with technology. I, I wonder if you can make him a governor as well, because in our previous video, if you go on my channel, um, you can have governors and spies. So that's going to be very interesting. Um, I wonder if you can place him as that. Uh, one thing that I saw was that Star Trek Infinite is going to play an inf emphasis on characters. So Spock, right? Uh, other characters probably see, like, maybe... Jean-Luc Picard, we might see other uh, famous uh, commanders like um, Commander Shelby, we might see her. Uh, so <clears throat> I'm going to keep an eye on that. Now, the other thing that I did notice is when you are building your fleet, he's at 2346, right? So roughly a dozen so years prior to the start of TNG, uh, the next generation. So in the ship designer, you only have the Miranda class here. Now, this is very Birth of the Federation-esque. So, in Birth of the Federation, you start out with, well, kind of, I believe you start out with a Miranda class or something similar to a Miranda class. Uh, now, so, obviously, in 2346, there were other ships that you could build, like, uh, I believe the Ambassador class, right? Excelsior class, uh, Constitution class. Um, I don't think they were building them around that time, but it was available. That's my son. <laughs> um, he's not feeling well either. Um, now, some of you guys might be looking at this and say, Wow, I can't build an Ambassador Class 2346? Mods. I guarantee you, the moment this game comes out, some people are going to be like, I'm going to put an Ambassador Class and an Excelsior Class. So don't worry about that if you um, want that. That's basically how Birth of the Federation in 1999 came out. Uh, and then people just modded the game and added those ships in the beginning of the game. So I'm not too concerned about that at all. Um... It kind of fits, and I feel like they're taking some inspiration from Birth of the Federation, because this square, I don't know if it was intentional or not, but it gives me that, I mean, if you ever play Birth of the Federation, it's all squares, right? Every sector is a square. Um, so it gives me that feeling, and this is not in Stellaris, so it's not like they just took it and say, oh yeah, we, oh yeah, we didn't intentionally do that. Um, Stellaris is, doesn't have this. So, I don't know if somebody did it intentionally, or I don't know how that, that happened, but it gives me a lot of Birth of the Federation vibes. I love that. Um, so, yeah, so what we saw here, I'm going to probably dive deeper into it, make another video if I find some really n good nuggets in there, but I just wanted to show you guys this. Uh, I'll also link it to the, um, this video in the description if you don't want to hear me ramble. <laughs> Uh, and my bad for the voice. I just my voice is just getting worse and worse. Um, anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. I'm very pumped. Can't wait. Catch you guys in the next one. See you then.